In a previous example, we learned about calculating the pH of a buffer system. In this example, we're going to learn about the effect of adding an acid or a base to that buffer. So we have a 1 liter solution containing 0.5 molar acetic acid and 0.4 molar sodium acetate. Acetic acid and acetate ion are conjugate acids and bases. They're both weak. That means we have a buffer system. The question gives you the pKa for acetic acid, 4.74, and the question asks, what is the pH of the buffer? Again, this is something that we've done already, and we can use either an ice table or we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation says that pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the conjugate base concentration over that of the conjugate acid. In this case, our conjugate base is the acetate ion, and our conjugate acid is the acetic acid. So the buffer equilibrium that we care about is acetic acid splits up into acetate ion plus H+. We have 0.4 molar sodium acetate, and that is 1 to 1 with the acetate ion, so we already know the concentration of our acetate ion. We know the concentration of our acetic acid, and we can plug all of those values in to calculate the pH. And we come up with an answer of 4.64 for our pH. And we find that our buffer solution has a pH of 4.64. If our, if our weak acid, weak base pair had equal concentrations, that log term would go to zero, and the pH would be equal to the pKa. In our case, however, we have slightly more acid, so you would expect the pH to be slightly less than the pKa. The second part of this example asks, what's the pH of the buffer after you add 50 mils of 0.3 molar HCl? So this is in addition of a smaller amount of strong acid or strong base, in this case, a strong acid. In a buffer, you would expect that the effect on the pH would be minimized. And in this case, since we're adding an acid, it'll be minimized because the acid will react with our acetate ion and produce some more acetic acid. And what we have to do is effectively just a titration where we react our HCl with our sodium acetate. Initially, we start with one liter of solution, and our sodium acetate is 0.4 molar, which means our acetate ion is 0.4 molar. And again, if we have one liter of solution, that means we have 0.4 moles of sodium acetate, or 0.4 moles of acetate ion. If we look at our 50 milliliters of 0.3 molar HCl, that gives us 0.0150 moles. And of course, initially, we have 0.5 molar acetic acid in one liter, which means 0.5 moles of acetic acid. And initially, before any reaction happens, we have no chloride ion. The acetate plus HCl reaction is one to one, which means the reactant with the smallest number of moles is going to be the limiting reagent. If the stoichiometry was different, we would have to check and see which is limiting. But in our case, it's obvious that the HCl is in smaller amount, and because it's one-to-one, -one, the HCl is limiting, which means at the end of the day, 0 0.015 moles of HCl will all be used up, and we'll be left with no more HCl. The acetate ion will also be used up in the amount of 0 0.015 moles. leaving us with 0.385 moles at the end of the reaction. The amount of acetic acid and chloride will go up by that 0.015 moles. Now we know from previous work that the chloride ion has no impact on the pH of a solution, so we can ignore it altogether. 
and all we're left with is an amount of acetate ion and an amount of acetic acid. These are still the components of a buffer, and we can use these moles in our new volume to find molarities, and we can plug those molarities into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Or we could recognize that the total volume is going to be the same for acetate and for acetic acid, and that the volume terms will cancel in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, in which case we can just use the number of moles. And if we do that, we end up with a pH of 4.61, which is down from the initial value of 4.64. So we can see that even though we added a fairly large amount of a moderately concentrated acid, the effect on the pH was dramatically minimized because of the buffer system. And the same type of method would be used if we had added strong base like NaOH instead of an acid.